Okay. So let us say to third week, right? Let's begin then. So we will chant. You can look at that uh, verse. So I'll do word by word. So Yesya Unmesha Nimesha Abhyam Jagadaha Pralayodayo Tam Shakti Chakra Vibhava Prabhavam Shankaram Stumaha so this is the very first line of Spandakariga and um, this is um, arguably the most important verse of this scripture. Okay? The universe, the singularity wants to experience itself. What should it do to experience itself? It has to create its own reflection. If it's totally one thing, it can't see itself. It can only see itself as a reflection. Just like your eyes can't see itself. It can see everything else. It can't see itself. It, if it has to see itself, it can only so, see through a reflection. When we open our eyes in the morning, who is opening the eyes? There is a limited identity. You as Manoj or Sandhya or Shailaja, each one of you open eyes and you think you are opening eyes individually. You have woken up. Okay? And now you have things to do. But... You didn't wake up. Um, I mean, that's a gift. We say that in, in Shaivism, the universe has opened its eyes to you. As you and through you is starting to look. Okay, so that is the waking up. And that's a powerful moment. The first time in the morning or whatever time you sleep and you're coming into that wakefulness, we can feel this Adya Spanda, the beginning pulsation where the consciousness is turning into itself to observe itself and that is a powerful moment that's the first reflection it's from that that your whole universe is going to get created you're reflecting on the consciousness and then suddenly you bring into life many 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 things to shine on that reflection okay so the first thing in the morning as you wake up don't think that you alone as an ego identity is waking up is a universe waking up, is reflecting on you, and through you is experiencing itself. What happens is the state of Jivan Mukti. Okay, Jivan Mukti is, is embodied liberation. You go to the ocean, you, you, you see it, the, the immensity of the ocean, and then you're sad that you didn't take your kid to see the ocean, and then you take a cup of the ocean, and take it home and say, hey, look at this, this is the ocean. Is it the ocean? It's not the ocean. It's a cup of water. Okay? It's only when it's continuous with the ocean that water stands as ocean. You take it out and separate it. It's not ocean. It's very limited. It's a few drops of water which is going to dry away any time. Now, Shankara as you is that. Each one of us take a few experiences. If other people's ideas about ourselves, our ideas about ourselves, take it and we say, I am this. You're out of the ocean. Okay? So they say you can be feeling yourself as the smallest being, but notice Shankara is equally penetrated into you. So Jiva, each one of us is a limited identity which is called Jiva, but this Jiva is Samavesha, is equally penetrated everywhere by this immensity of Shankara, this immensity of consciousness. Okay? So only thing is we are not yet recognizing because we are stubbornly saying, no, I am only this way, I am only this way. I have no connection with this ocean. Okay? So that's what we are saying. We are not one with the ocean. And I am just this body. Where is Shankara here? I like that all we will say. But the teaching is saying, Samavesha. You are into Shiva, Shiva is into you. Equally penetrated. This is just that supreme consciousness and individual consciousness. So the concept is beautiful. It says, Vishwathirna, meaning the transcendent self, and Vishwamaya, the immanent self, both are Samavesha. Both are equally penetrated into each other. It's not like transcendent as 50 feet above the immanent, it's equally penetrated. Okay, so this is a very important concept, Samavesha. Okay, because the whole text, Shemaraja begins by saying that this text is going to grant you Jivan Mukti which will make you enter Shankara and give you this experience of Samavesha.